Hello traders, Gary Wagner here at just about two o'clock in Honolulu, seven o'clock in New York. It is Monday, 23rd day of November, 2020, and this is the daily report for gold and silver. Sharp declines in both gold and silver respectively, with gold trading off by about 2%, silver about 3%. Fantastic news in that another pharmaceutical company has come out with a viable vaccine. That optimism created an extremely strong risk on market environment, taking all of the indexes higher and moving gold lower. We'll talk about that in more detail, specifically different levels of support we could see gold and silver fall to if they continue to drop. But first, to the price board. Traders, we had sharp drops in both gold and silver today. Dollar was fractionally higher, and we had U.S. equities across the board trading higher. This by an announcement by AstraZeneca that they now have a very effective vaccine, now making it a threesome instead of two viable vaccines. Gold lost almost 2%, a decline of $37.20, with December futures at 1835.20. When we look at silver, 23.61, down a little over 75 cents and a little over 3%. When we look at spot gold, that gained 64 cents at 1837.50. And lastly, the U.S. dollar, 92.52. Up fractionally. In the case of the most recent activity in gold, the cross between the 50 day moving below the 100 day was absolutely a precursor to lower pricing. Today we had gold close down about $38. We are now trading in Australia, 1835.70, putting it down about $2 on the day. The question we need to ask ourselves is whether or not this move sustained major chart damage and the fact that we broke through what i believe to be an extremely critical price point meaning the 38.2 percent fibonacci retracement again a retracement from the entire rally from march up until august is significant so where do we believe gold could trade to from here based upon the fundamentals that drove gold and silver prices lower could be bearish for gold for at least the short term. The fact of the matter is what it tells the public is yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We knew that, but it seems as though we are much closer to that light than we were, let's say a week ago. It indicates that we will see global vaccinations available much sooner than we had expected. So where could we see gold move to if in fact it continues on its downward track? The first and most logical place to look at is going to be the 200 day. It has swiftly moved through the 50 and 100 day. Currently, we have the 200 day moving average at 1799. Let's round that off to about 1800. And that's a very logical point for a market to find support if in fact it's going to. And when I say logical, what I mean by that, A, it is a deeply important psychological number. And secondly, we can see point in times in which it acted as resistance, which is right in here, and then quickly converted to support. Once it found support, it formed a base for some time and had that final push to the all-time record high. So that would be the first area I would look at. Below that comes the 50% retracement, although I don't think that that's as strong of a technical indicator as the 200-day moving average, but both price points are absolutely possible. And traders, I do want to take a look at silver. We're looking at a daily candlestick chart with the three same moving averages, 50, 100, and 200-day. As you can see, the 50-day has now crossed below the 100-day. It lagged behind gold but it now has crossed. And the other thing that is very noticeable, even though it sustained a greater drawdown, is the price point or percentage difference between current pricing and the 200-day moving average is much wider of a gap than what we're seeing with gold. The 50% retracement is actually above the 200-day moving average, which is the reverse of what we're seeing gold do. However, at the same time, I do believe that if we see the U.S. equities markets really go on a tear, 
then we get that industrial component of silver kicking in. And if that's the case, it could in fact be under less pressure than gold. But the rule of thumb is they tend to move in tandem. And when gold moves down, silver tends to move down in a greater percentage. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. We will talk to you tomorrow for the next daily update and review. Bye-bye.